I think that that that's the trick of this realm that people haven't got is that once the simulation was created, what we can call true good isn't here. It's outside of the matrix. And one of the great tricks that were done, what the Demiurge did, was to manifest good and evil. So the Demiurge actually manifested both sides in the dream, light and dark. And it's like good cop and bad cop, and they're playing both sides. And the Demiurge doesn't really care which side you pick, because as soon as you pick a side, you're on one side of the coin. It means the coin exists. As long as you've chosen heads or tails, there's a coin. Hello and welcome, Campbell here from Spiral Up, and we're back again with Howdy for another uh, Rules of the Realm chat, um, last one of the year, I'm guessing, we're sort of a week away from Christmas at the moment, so welcome Howdy, how are you going? Hey Campbell, uh, relatively okay, <laughs> yeah, I had my little burn today on my wood stove, so I'm soaking my hand as we oh, speak no. in cold water. <laughs> All right, um... Yeah. Yeah, so we don't really have a plan. To... That's 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 pretty natural. At this time of the year, I do this about three or four times a year. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you're going into winter, right? Or well, you're in winter, we're at Christmas, aren't we? So you're fully in winter, I guess. We're in winter, yeah. In winter, yeah, yeah winter. it's been, we've had like a series of minus 20, a week of like minus 20. Now it's like minus 20, minus three. So it's like, it's like, it's like beach weather now. Oh, I, I can't even fathom minus 20. Welcome bits. to the north. <laughs> Gosh, I think I might leave it, at least in wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah th th things, things think that the weather out there isn't so, so bad, is it, Camp? Yeah, well, exactly. You know, I'm sort of complaining that it's not summer here really yet. It still, um, you know, feels like winter, but, you know, that's 25 plus, you know, degrees Celsius is sort of cold. It's like, why isn't it hotter? So, yeah. yeah, it's not so bad. I'm sitting here in shorts and a Hawaiian shirt, oh. so I'm not doing too badly. <laughs> All right, so. So where um, would you like to go today, my friend? Yeah, we didn't really have a plan, but we were sort of talking about, um, You've just recently done a video and you've mentioned the uh, videos on the Cabbage Patch Kids that Mind Unveiled did, where he's found all these old postcards, um, very strange postcards of children in ca cabbage patches. And um, yeah, I sort, of, I sort of knew about the, 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 all I knew about it was the Cabbage Patch Kids of the 1980s. And I remember, I think my mum or my dad told me, oh, it's, you know, it comes from some old story or something. And that's kind of all I knew about it, but now it looks like it might be, you know. I mean, we've spent a lot, of, a few years saying, you know, the the stories and uh, the truth, and the, you know, what they give us is, is the truth is the story. So, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, you know, we talk about the all these orphans and resets, and um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I guess what's what's really interesting for me now in the last say three weeks or so on this subject on this sort of when you go back looking at historical stuff um so we've got like a channel like this person and and other people like them who are who are putting out fairly good research and really finding some really really interesting stuff and some really interesting photographs i, I didn't even have had the time yet to go into the depth i'd like to look into his material it looks very interesting mm -hmm. and then we have this other website and i don't want to or other web channel i don't want to say what the channel's name is but they're producing a whole lot of obviously fake historical photographs they're producing this giant amount of fake material and um as if it's almost like trying to discredit the people who are doing real historical research so we're at mm -hmm. so we're at this very strange point of like a lot more stuff seems to be coming out a lot more of this uh, um, somebody somehow gets the right angle and figures something out and, and searches the right stuff. And then there's these, it's like almost like this guaranteed 
energetic historical research blocks that are coming at the same time mm. to try to maybe spin people into, well, I'm not going to believe anything then. So we're, we're also in a very strange period of, of uh, what's coming out and really having to make discernment choices of, are we seeing truth or are we seeing something fake? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you've, are, they, are you talking about, have you seen the Antarctic videos? I've seen all oh, the pictures. I've seen those ones. Yeah. And I've seen a few other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sort of, and there's a whole slew of them. These sites yeah, are bringing out with it. Yeah. I've seen like tribal sort of people, but they don't look like, they don't look human kind of thing. Um, but this is the thing. I kind of saw those and, and instantly I thought, hang on, that, there's something not right. And I did, I did a few, you know, a bit of a search and I couldn't find anything in the, you know, that, that was older than, you know, sort of a month or something. So um, this is the thing. And we're seeing lots of um, channels as well. I'm not sure if you've sort of been bitten, but lots of channels are popping up and they're just spending their time just making videos about other channels, just trying to discredit people, just, you know. Um, so that's very, in and in another interesting thing that's going on in the community is that suddenly popped its, you know, reared its ugly head. It's so it, it's I mean, it's obviously indicating something's going on, you know, something's happening right mm -hmm. now that, that this information is striking a pretty big chord. And because um, it's been uh, what would you say about four to five years now where this this yeah looking into alternative history has kind of popped up. Right. Yeah. So we're at a, about, about a five end of a five year um, span and there's been a lot of very good research for a while but like i say now it's starting to fragment now it's starting to uh, move to uh, um, more like popularity or more like sensationalism and less about real research anymore so it's moved into some strange areas and it's is that is that just how things evolve in these fields because did that happen to flat earth did that happen to the mandela effect did that or is this sort of something structured to say, because yeah, like, like the Antarctic videos, you can, you don't, it doesn't take long to see like some of the Photoshop stuff in there to see the, the AI has made mistakes in the, in the, in the photo, in the photographic. So even if you had some real photographs and even if by something was real, why would you throw something that you can obviously look at and say, that's been, that's been doctored. That's a doctored photograph. Um, and then provide no, um, no uh, links as to where the originals. I found these things here. This is my source. So when you don't also have it, when you're going to put something so exorbitant, you better source it. And there's no sources for any of this stuff. So at least as I understand, like this Cabbage Patch stuff that um, Mind Unveiled is doing, he's he's got the sources, right? As far as I understand, all of these photographs and these videos, he's got the originals. You can go and see where he got them from. And that's a big part of research, which we've, we've also kind of lost. I'll shut up here in a second. But we've lost this, the modern way the internet does business now and the way videos are done. You don't, most people don't reference where they get their material from. They don't say, oh, I went to this site and look, I read this person's book and here's, it just, they present information and it's like, well, is it theirs? Does it come from someone else? Who did the research? How can we backtrack it? We've lost yeah. this kind of footnoting. Here's where my information comes from. And, and that, that hurts the research going forward. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and in, you see that in the wider community as well, like as far as YouTube, that there's all these just videos that are just, they just commentate on other people's videos. And so, not, you know, they're not providing sources or anything. They, they're just like, well, this person said this and they commentate on that. And then you get all these videos and it becomes like, um, you know, popular consensus becomes the truth kind of thing. Because everyone's just sort of saying the same thing, but, it, but they, no one knows what it's based on. It's just this, um, yeah, sort of propagating, you know, a general opinion. So, it's pretty interesting times we're living in. Um, and of course, we're at the end of the year going into 2023. And um, I mean, getting back to the the, the Cabbage Patch Kids and the um, orphan trains, you also sort of referenced, and some people may have seen that there's a video, I think it's a couple of months old now, um, where they, they show baby incubators, basically the modern version. Um, and I mean, artificial wombs, I think they're even calling them, aren't they? Uh, very sort of matrix looking. And and they're basically saying, yeah, you don't, you know, you don't need your own room anymore. We've got one for you. 
Right. It's and, and we've seen that it's it's a it's supposed to be a concept. It was supposed to be like a like um an artist's conceptualization of the future, but you know, obviously if this is coming out now, this is there there's a message that's going out to the population. We're close. You know, it's not this is not accidental that's coming out now. So we're we're close or it's in operation somewhere you don't know about. And um it again, it makes the it makes the realization that we're in a reset. It's happening. Yeah, it's hap- whether you want to whether you want to like it or not. It's happening, and we need to recognize more of the last one, so that we can be one step ahead of what's what's coming here. And that's the value that that's the value of the historical work is is seeing where we've been, so you can see it again. And the control of history means. You don't see what happened properly in the past, so you you can't you can't predict what's going. If you have a good knowledge of history, you, you're you become a really good psychic because you just look mm-hmm. at it and say, "Oh, this is exactly what happened 80 years ago," and so I'm going to guess this will happen next. And you're usually right. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, we live in a you know cyclical system. It's all it's all cycles, isn't it? But that's what I was going to say. Are we at the end of a cycle? Because and I find it interesting that you know it, we sort of literally got onto this reset concept about a year before you know we ended up in one right um but what we mm-hmm. see there is all these you know photos and all these weird you know empty cities and things and then you know the the introduction of um populations the incubators the orphans um and you know look look at the wider picture what they're doing now with all this um you know trans can i say genderisms and all these people who are binary and 15 different you know sexes and all this kind of stuff um you know now that now they will be able to have that you know males will be able to have a womb right they just go and buy one <laughs> just so their, their fetus in that so it's all sort of um tying into this breakdown of you know the family definitely but also this you know you don't need to be anything to have a child at which kind of turns children into commodities more isn't it which again is what we see in the past all the kids end up in factories and out on farms working and stuff and they're like a commodity so um it's very sort of dehumanizing so yeah i mean we're in a reset obviously um yeah what what, what, yeah what what, where do you see this going in the next sort of say 12 months have you got any ideas on on what's a couple well Okay, 12, 12 months is hard to say because, you know, the ones who are sort of playing this, playing this segment, they have a, they have a, a plan and a schedule and we don't know what the plan and the schedule is completely. We can kind of, I guess, see though that whatever this, this point is, is coming. And, and a lot, a lot of people have talked about, it's going to be a time loop that it's literally the reset is, you know, means exactly what it means a a turning back of whether it's 80 years a hundred years a thousand years it doesn't matter but there's going to be this this return back in 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 a time loop um the problem i have with that fully is that well why would you go to all of this work to in a sense really they're planning the next level of the simulation right that's what's going on they're planning the new simulated reality so why would you need you wouldn't need to plan a new simulated reality if you know the the world's going to loop back a thousand years and you know it just it'll end on february 8 2027 20, and okay and you just loop back you wouldn't go to all this trouble so i don't know if it's like if there if there is a, a time loop that there's also like well what if the time loop didn't go this time what if someone stopped it humans stopped it and they have a they have their backup plan ready I'm not sure it kind of like to try to understand what it means by the word reset is also mm. challenging because reset means going back to zero or back to the start. But this somehow could, in their terms, it could mean going forward to a new start. I'm not sure how to even take yeah. the word. Yeah. Yeah. Like to set, you know, it's like setting the stage, you know, reset the stage, you know, for the next chapter. Um, yeah. I, this is the thing. I mean, I think one thing we, we've, you know, all sort of learn or need to come to terms with if we haven't, it's all this intel stuff that's been going on for years. This is going to happen and this is going to happen and these people are doing this and this and this. And here we are, what, three years in and still nothing's happened. But, you know, a lot of people are still sitting there waiting, you know, for, for the saviour to come and 
and save them, which I think is um, one of the big lessons because, you know, again, if you look back in the history, the ones who sat around and, you know, did nothing are the ones who suffered the most, right? You've got to get sort of got to get off because, I mean, this, this this reset is the first one at least, that you know, in recent-ish times that we know of where we've had technology to communicate with each other. So that, you know, in... You can imagine in the past couple, you know, it would have been a lot easier for them to get their job done without anyone knowing, you know, there was no social media or, you know, telephones or anything. So um, do you think we're on top of it this time? Like, do you think, I mean, it doesn't seem to be going that well for them at the moment, does it? But, I mean, is that part of the plan or? We're not the first ones to figure this out, you know, we we're not, people have figured what's going on. I think people in the past have figured out even more than we have. And I like to talk about, we have a, a, a real series of email, that's etheric mail, that we have a way of naturally communicating with each other. We, we actually have our own social network within our brain or in our bodies somehow, in our inner structure. Mm. And we've just been taught now in the last hundred years or whatever not to use that and we have to use external technology i think that's why people picked up to the internet so quickly is because internally we know yeah this is natural it's natural to have access to information quickly it's 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 natural to be able to actually communicate with people who aren't like physically in my world right now who are somewhere else so some way we knew this is and we just what we've been taught it's something external that we need to make it happen as opposed to you've already got that information within you. So it's also, I think, part of the I don't know if we're in any different place than we've been in the past in its totality. We're just we have a different structured setup of how it's happening. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't think we know more than people in the past. We just know it in a different way. Mm. Yeah. And do you think. Like, do you think their plan's going to, is on course for them, or do you see it? Because, I mean, when I look into it, the more I look at it, it just seems to be, you know, not going their way. But then I, I mean, what gets me is, you know, when we, we have these photos of, like, Biden, right, with these, the earlobes have changed. So, you know, it's a physical change, which means we're clearly looking at a different person. Now, if that's true, that means that, everything like all the him falling over and not remembering lines and walking into walls and all this stuff that's all the act right and if that's the act then you know like how much that's the question is is all this stuff just to to sort of make us go oh look stuff is happening but behind the scenes it's actually something different going on or are they actually you know what do you think is that is there a good do you do you think there's a good side to you know do you think it's this is a, a good against bad sort of battle that there's a good force in there as well or is it more bad taking over and we better you know start swimming or we're gonna sink kind of thing i think that that that's the trick of this realm that people haven't got is that once the simulation was created what we can call true good isn't here it's outside of the matrix. And one of the great tricks that were done with the Demiurge did was to manifest good and evil. So the Demiurge actually manifested both sides in the dream, light and dark. And it's like good cop and bad cop, and they're playing both sides. And the Demiurge doesn't really care which side you pick, because as soon as you pick a side, you're on one side of the coin. It means the coin exists. As long as you've chosen heads or tails, there's a coin. Yeah. Right. Remember that matrix thing? It's when you when you start thinking that there's no spoon. So yeah. as long as we're thinking there's a coin and we have to pick one side or the other, we're in we're in the matrix. And the great the great um, um, withdrawal is to see that both sides are controlled within the matrix. Now, of course, we would most people like us would naturally be turned to a I'd like to move to a more good, light, kind, interactive side. But it's also to see that but that's in it's it's also in the matrix, too. And what's the option that is like outside of all of that, where we are more an independent observer? We are working from our independent uh, totality 
which would then link us to this true good. I, I get the sense, again, I'm talking a lot today, Camel, sorry. Um, I get the sense, that, and this is just my feeling. This is a feeling. I get the sense that we talk, everyone likes to talk about we're, we're co-creators and we're making our reality and we're, we're interacting with all that. And I think that's wrong. I think we have almost no impact on what happens around us at all. I think it's 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 all coming from the matrix. Our our uh, free will, you might say, is in our perception. We get to choose how we perceive what's going on around us. We get to choose how we're what our opinions are going to be about it, and we get to choose what our feelings are, are and our emotions about it are going to be. And the reaction of the world is going to kind of just happen on its own. We get tricked into thinking what I do really affects out there. And if we start to see, actually it's out there that's affecting in here. And this is what we have a chance to control. That changes everything. That changes everything. If we realize what we control is here and out there is going to kind of, maybe we don't have much control at all. It alters everything then about how we might go about our business here. Just theory. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's taking the middle path, isn't it? And not, you know, the whole sort of non-judgment thing. Um, I've been thinking a, bit, a lot about that, like, because when, when you judge them, yeah. you... you or, judge or, or at least not 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 digging into it so deeply, you know what I mean? Like not 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 being invested in the exterior yeah. as if it's it's about me. I've somehow done this or I'm doing this to the world. The world's just operating on some weird uh program that i don't know at all but just like the guy playing the video game you can then determine how you want to react to that what's yeah. your response to it and the more our response like you say can be centered and just seeing things in a more clear way we i think we harmonize tremendously mm. well i mean it's like this you know the coin right when when you pick a side it's real it's like the more we you know focus on things as real and attach ourselves the more real they become right and the more we end up in the cycle of the outside world and it distracts us from which does seem to be kind of the game doesn't it you know it sort of seems to be you know can, can we work out that that all the stuff outside of us doesn't actually matter you know which, which is this another big dichotomy you know with with what we're doing right we're making videos <laughs> And talking to people and trying to get information out and and ideas and get conversations started, but in the end, is that are we just adding to the you know to the to the matrix to the illusion? By you know, should be is it better to just go and sit in you know I don't know sit in a field and think deep thoughts? Because because the more we interact with the outside world, Good question, the real we make it, don't we? Yes. And also, I guess, no, I think there's, there's a happy medium. Again, there's, there's a middle ground for everything. Uh, I think there also seems to be um, sometimes a requirement that things from the outside are needed to help, um, help with inner realizations that all realizations don't just come being alone sitting in the forest that sometimes it's good to have someone else there to ask questions to or hear information from or get ideas, even if the ideas turn out to be wrong or incorrect you've at least heard an idea and thought about it contemplated it, looked into it and made a decision internally of which way to go so i think it's a bit of both right mm. i think it's not going too far in the world and going overboard and it's not retreating too much either what's the happy medium i know i read somewhere years ago that a key part of the uh the uh, uh those in the ancient Egyptian temples, they didn't just stay in the temple all the time and learn. They were sent out into the world and they had to spend time in the world interacting with the way the, the cities and things are structured, which were also tests of how much have you learned? How are you handling the world? How are, if, you just, if you just retreat to the cave only, uh, you're missing that test in the external world too. So it's somehow this medium, this yeah. middle balance. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's, you've got to sort of at least observe, you know, to, to you know, learn something. I mean, I guess, and that sort of leads to the question of, you know, what's it, what's it all about? <laughs> what's what's the deal here? What are we here for? Are we here to to learn from the outside world, you know, to, to observe and to contemplate and to learn through that and then 
to make better decisions, which is this whole kind of we're here to grow kind of concept, or is it more that we're here to what you know become spiritual and get in touch with spirit and do nothing, or is it is it just a trap? And the only the only sort of point to it is is to work out how to get out. Yeah, it, I mean, again, if we're getting mind wiped, if we're getting a memory wiped as soon as we get in here, then we know it's not a place to learn. That that's that's obviously a lie from from a grand perspective. There's nothing to learn other than I mean, within the dream, there's lots to learn to function in it. Yeah, there's you you can say you can learn endlessly in here, but then it's like, but so what? I learned how to fix a car. I learned how to do this. I learned how to make this. I learned how to cook this food. I learned, at the end of the day, when you die, it's a bit so what? So what does all of it, because even if you, you, you can't take it to a new life, you can't do anything with it after this point. So we know it's not learning, right? Okay, becoming more spiritual. The, the problem is, is that word and how that's become what people believe that word is, which is some sort of perfection, some sort of specialness, some sort of, some sort of uh, elite idea about yourself, which is not also not true. So then we're back to, yeah, maybe it's just all we have to do is see, hey, this is a really screwed up creation and probably we were tricked into getting in here. So let's untrick ourselves and find out what's on the other side. Mm. Anything else is just going to keep the trick going. I, I don't see anything else because I can't see, I can't see anything in this realm. That's actually, I could say is for my growth, for my, for, for bettering this thing here. So mm. if there's nothing, then yeah <laughs> what's I mean, the point <laughs> it seems very yeah like we're given all these you know ideas and trinkets and and scenes and that you know that that seem to be attainable and if they were it'd be a great place but the, the, the reality is is most of that's not attainable right you know this sort of living on a tropical island or whatever you know your dream may be um the way that it's all set up it's not it's not attainable so it's not um you know it's a good question isn't it so um i mean so that then the next question is how do we get out there's you know obviously but lots of talk about well, well it's really interesting because uh, we started this as we called it rules of the realm right we started okay. this idea can we find the rules of the matrix so that we can figure out how to operate better and i still think that's valid but i mean I mean, we just said, hey, I just said, hey, there's there's nothing of value here. This place is a nut, nut house and we need to get out. But at the same time, we're in it. We're in you know, it. we're in, what are you gonna do? in yeah. the nut house. And so you might say if there's anything from a learning perspective, it's, yeah, can you learn the coding or the program here as much as you can so that you can be one step ahead of the code? Okay, that makes sense. So partially what we were doing, I think, has value. But normally that becomes, well, how can I get what I want? How can I figure out the program so I can get all the goodies I want, which is just another trap to keep you locked in the system, as opposed to how can I navigate, how can I learn the system to kind of avoid it as much as possible? That's a completely different way of going about it, as opposed to how can I learn it to get what I want? How can I learn it so I can avoid it? That's a very interesting theory right there. Can we learn the rules of the matrix not so we can use them and manipulate them, but so we can literally turn our back on them and just ignore them. What an mm -hmm. interesting idea. Yeah, and will, and will that make it disappear? You know, is it only, you know, because that's the concept of, you know, it's our energy that's sort of keeping this matrix upright, and that's why they spend too much, so much time manipulating our thoughts and, and, you know, directing what we're focusing on. So, you know, if if we all focused on, yeah it something something that's not it that would be a a very interesting thing wouldn't it indeed um yeah it's uh, i forgot what i was going to say so what do you think i know you've been talking um and obviously you've just finished a book as well um about um you know the light right um the light <laughs> and i've had a few conversations that you know it's sort of starting to come out now is this sort of false light um, you know, that we see a lot about in the, the self-help kind of you know, genre, the sort of psychic, you know, people who channel the, you know, the archangels and all this kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, go to the light, go to the light. It's all about the light. Um, 
yeah, do you want to touch on that quickly and your thoughts on that for anyone who hasn't sort of heard it? Sure. Uh, of course, if we consider in so many cases that the original creator of this realm, the Demiurge, is also known as Lucifer, meaning the light bearer, the light bearer or the fallen, the fallen light or whatever, which links very carefully into the into the story, then what we have is we we have we have a what you might call a true light, but the true light isn't necessarily here, right? It's not in this realm. We can we can gain information about it or we can gain mm, what's the word we can gain some knowledge of it but we're not actually connecting with it so bizarrely when we're talking i think about the light and oh i'm connecting to the the, the wonderful light well the light is lucifer right and so uh and 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 it's not always and it's not it won't be bad right because if the light, the light is splitting into two different sides, it's, it's becoming light, light and dark light. And so sometimes, you know, I mean, if, if all that happened in here was darkness, if all that happened in here was continuous suffering and continuous hor horror, people would figure it out. You'd start to figure out what an awful place this is. It would, it would, you'd clue in. But if sometimes good things happen, if sometimes positive things occur, if sometimes it's like a slot machine. If you lost every time you put your quarter in the slot machine, you'd stop playing. Mm. The point is, is that sometimes the slot machine has to pay you out. You have to actually win. But the key is that you win less than you put in. The slot machine wants you to put in $100 and win back 90. Yeah. Slow, uh, slow, um, draining of your money that's a really good i think for this realm this realm is is given is taking a hundred dollars from us and it's giving us back 90 all the time and we've learned to focus on the 90 like you know a, a bad gambler focuses yeah i, I won 90 dollars on the slot machine but didn't you have a hundred to start with so actually you're down 10 that's mm -hmm. kind of how i see the realm we 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 are it's it's actually tricked our focus onto one thing which is kind of true, but we're missing the other part that kind of negates the thing we're trying to focus on. Mm. Yes. So, like, do you think we can work this out from from within? Like, there's so many movies, um, you know, like The Matrix, you know, Thirteenth Floor, all these things where the the players in, that are in, in the game, pretty much, you know, they show us that they're in the illusion. They they kind of work it out, right? They they kind of crack the code. Uh, Truman shows another one and and they end up getting out. Do you think that's is that telling us something? Or did you think do you think that we can well know? well I think that's a problem too. The movies are good. Well the movies are good at showing the trap or some of the trap. They're good at showing Plato's cave. Yeah. There isn't one movie that shows exiting. There isn't one. Even the Truman show, people think, oh, he's reached the end, he goes up the stairs, he opens the door. But then what? Yeah. But what's really what's Truman going to do? He's going to get outside. Sylvia's going to come and meet him. He's going to go into Los Angeles and he's going to learn all about the world outside the bubble. And he's never going to ask and say, "Wait a minute, is this another Truman show? Have I just moved from a small bubble to a bigger bubble?" He's going to just instantly say, "Ah, real world now." Same that Neo, same thing, right? He gets out of the Matrix and he accepts the Morpheus Trinity, the the Nebuchadnezzar. That's real. He's not. Never like if Neo is really alert there, he's questioning, wait a minute, why should I listen to any of you? How do I know I'm just not in another level of the matrix? How can I test my reality? Mm. So none of the movies take us to the next level of like seeing a character leave the matrix. And I think there's a reason for it because they they don't want anyone leaving the matrix. Yeah, exactly. they, they, they're happy with people exploring the matrix. They're happy with people understanding the matrix. They're happy with happy with people maybe learning how to na manipulate and navigate it better. But the actual, but actually going, leaving them, even in Dark City, right? John Murdoch never leaves Dark City. So it's very challenging when we when we step back that like no one leaves the matrix, actually. Yeah. No one. God, Maybe sad. Donnie Darko's the closest, but even then, I don't know. Donnie Darko, gosh, that, that's still I'm still trying to work that movie out. Very, very strange. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he kind of works. Yeah, it's it, it, oh, what a, what a what a brilliant movie. Once you kind of get it, yeah. Once you get the end, it's all to do with the end bit, isn't it? And but yeah, <laughs> that's for another video. Actually, you've done a video, um, 
So we'll leave uh, Howdy's link below. Go to check out his channel. He's yeah. done at least one video on Donnie Darko. Um, so we're at the end of the year. What, what's something positive and happy that we can finish a year on? It's been a little bit sort of dark um, because, I mean, this is the thing, like, um, you know, what are we here to do, right? What do we do? Um, and there's all this change going on. And, I mean, I, the way I see it as well is it's it's kind of, it's a, it's a time of opportunity, right? We've got kind of more opportunity now than than ever, really. But at the same time, they're bringing all this stuff in, and, and I guess that's a good question. With all this, you know, um, you know, all the new they're talking about all the new lockdowns and the climate stuff and all the baby stuff. You know, is that just more propaganda? You know, like where do you think we are? Like, do you think that that's just all part of this? So because I, I kind of look, I'm looking at it now like like the intel. There was all this intel, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, but nothing ever happened. The, the news is the same. This is going to happen, this is going to happen, and we get all these stories, oh, this has happened, and I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just in, you know, in Perth and I'm not seeing it, but what do you think? Like, mm. I guess it's the same question I asked before. Well, one of the things at the end of the last video I talked about that I did, yeah, is is and and I haven't paid enough attention to it when you're asking, well, what's our response to all of this insanity? And that's that's laughter, that's humor. Yes, yes I did. See that's it. that that is something that I think a lot of us have forgotten. That as you start digging into this material deeply, it it does affect you. It kind of it does depress you. It, it can be very very disconcerting to look at. The reality, the reality as it actually is, when you start being honest and you start seeing what the hell's going on here, it, you know, your natural response is, holy crap. <laughs> and we forget that the, one of the greatest responses we have is the ability to have humor and laugh about it and make a joke about it. Mm. Like it's it like, like I, like I mentioned, I think Nietzsche was the one who said something like humans are the ones who needed to invent laughter only because their suffering is so great, something like that. Mm. And, and the ability to, to find something humorous and, and, and uh, yeah, sar sarcastic and, mm. um, you know, sat and satire in our situation is, I, I think that's a way of, that pulls us up automatically. You're not fully in it. If you can find something to laugh about. That's why I like that guy Awaken with JP, JP Sears, his channel. He's yeah. taken all of this realm and he's found ways to turn it into something humorous. Mm. And I think that's at least me going forward. I want to start doing more of that, not just in my life, but in the videos and any books I write. I want to bring more of that in because I think that's one of our great responses to the insanity outside of us. Mm. Yeah, I mean, humor is humor's great. And, and another good thing about it is, you know, those who wish to control us, they hate it when we laugh at them. But, I mean, just the whole um, meme culture is, is great. And there's, again, there's channels just dedicated to just showing these, you know, funny memes, right? These people do things and people just react instantly now and just, <laughs> just turn it into a joke, which is, is probably the best, you know, response because, you know, as well as making us, you know, feel better at, at it um, sort of devalues them, right? They're not so scary if you're just laughing at them. You know, Joe's just a, a silly old... Yeah, and we get the endorphin release. I know Mr. Park talked about that a lot. He talked about the need to... when That's part of what the rice spoon practice was, right? He'd hit us with the rice spoon, we'd feel pain and we'd laugh. So we were supposed to get used to when something was difficult, you laugh at it. One of the chemical reasons is the endorphins get released as soon as you laugh and it starts it's already there's a healing process in your body a calming process in your body so we're also not only distancing a bit from the situation we're not ignoring it right you're not trying to ignore the situation you're and you're finding ways also through humor that you can bring the situation to more people like yeah. if you just direct the situation out front a lot of people are going to re instantly reject it but like that's where george carlin was a genius george carlin took really important social issues and wrap them in a package of humor and people could accept it more. They could, they would listen to what, what he had to say and maybe think about it later. So that might be our greatest response that, that we need to find more ways to, yeah, bring humor into what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And just don't take, life so seriously you know this is a whole thing i think 
when you do take it seriously and you believe everything that's going on is, you know, happening, it's all bad and we get all tied up emotionally. But, I mean, you know, what's the worst that could happen, right? It's only life. It's like, you know, what's the like, seriously, what is the worst that could happen is we don't learn and we end up back here, you know, so nothing. We die and we're back in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So the best. Right. Which is, which is, which is the schedule anyway. The worst thing that can happen <laughs> is the way things are actually going scheduled down. for us. <laughs> so, okay. That's the worst, which is pretty bad. I've got to admit that's, that, that's a pretty bad ending. Oh, good. But um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst. So, you know, that's it. And it. so, hmm. yeah. Like I, I do remember one thing I do remember in my comedy days. I know most people would have unbelievable. Well, I can't imagine I was actually a stand-up comedian because yeah, the, the yeah. personality here just doesn't, you know, match that at all. Right? Right. Um, but right. when I did live in that, <laughs> yeah, when I lived in that realm, there were a lot less things that bothered me. Now that didn't mean I didn't get bothered by stuff and, and you know, annoyed by stuff, but a lot of stuff just instantly got deflected because I found. I, I found how I could turn it into a joke, how I could, the situation going on in front of me and my mind's thinking, wait a minute, I got a comedy bit out of this. This is great. You know, and I'm, and so already you're, you're, you would see the world differently when you're trying to find comedic yeah. stuff. It would be like the, I guess the opposite or not the opposite, but another positive way would be somebody who's trying to um, engage the world sensually. And I don't mean like in a sexual way, I mean in a sensual way in that they are attempting to, you might say, taste the world completely. So it would be also, it, in, it's, a, it's a little different way. The, the, the comedy way is, is, is stepping back from it a little bit. The sensual way would be moving into it even deeper, totally into the sense experience of it. And we kind of get stuck in the middle of it. We're constantly, we're not one side or the other. So we're kind of get, we get overwhelmed and maybe that's part of it. We have to choose one way or the other and kind yeah. of go into this insanity because it's insane. So how are we going to handle the insaneness around us? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's where a lot of people are as well, isn't it? It's like this decision of people have realized they've got a decision, they've got a choice and they don't have to live in civilization and do the, you know, 40 year plan and all this, they can do something different. And a lot of people are starting to move out, which I think yeah. is a good thing, you know, get out of the system physically, get out into nature and get some, some you know, time and some earth under your feet and, um, you know, distance yourself from it, I think is a big thing. Um, I'm actually, I didn't, haven't told you, I'm actually going to be mm. moving over mm. to, over east in the, in a month or so and hanging out, living with Kelly for a while. She's got 150 acres, so I'm going to go and build a little house and grow some gardens and get out there and spend yeah less time on the computer and more time out there you know sort of in the doing phase i guess um because that's another thing we all got caught up a lot in in front of screens and in the last two years that you know a lot of people haven't been outside enough it's affecting and now now we're seeing this big health kind of everyone's got the flu it's because no one's been out in the sun for two years probably and um so, yeah, I think that's a, a big, you know, takeaway as well for, for the end of the year is, you know, laugh a lot, but also get out there and, you know, get out of the system a bit more. And, you know, if you can get out into the country and into nature and get your feet on the yeah. earth again. And, um, yeah, I think that's definitely going to help. And I think another thing that you're doing, I've noticed, I haven't looked into them deep, deeply yet, but you're doing these male um, videos. I can't remember what you call them, a certain male podcast or something, right? Where you're mean, talking about yeah, sort yeah. of looking at, the masculinity yeah and i think that that's also something that isn't i mean we're being we're being pulled away from all of those things and there should be more uh people coming out say okay we're going to talk about males and masculinity and i'm just going to talk about females and femininity and we're going to share all this information i think that's also valuable uh, information if nothing else just to get people to think about about it and contemplate it because in the ancient world that was very important the interplay of how the masculine and the feminine was and and then what you and how it how it would create everything how it create how it actually strengthens and heals the other one all of these things were, mm. were built into like our system almost and that's being lost so just i think that's also a valuable tool to think about because it's it's not negative it's not positive it's just it's it's about being human yeah 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 thanks and, and what we, we try and bring we're trying to bring humor into that as well we've got a few sort of dad jokes sort of bits um but that's the thing we don't have 
you know, I mean, you know, the only people with the men's clubs that are left are those that, you know, wish to control us, right? But there used to be men's clubs and there used to also be ceremony, you know, like boys and girls um, would come of age and they'd know when they, you know, left childhood and became adults and then and, and how they, where that change is, where they take on a different role, where, where we don't have that anymore. So now we have, you know, children, 40-year-old children kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think that they're all big conversations exactly. to be had. And like you said, it's it's the family unit that ultimately is the, the strongest thing. You know, when you have a man, a woman, a home, children, um, it's very hard to break that, you know, which is, of course, why they put so much emphasis on doing exactly that, right? Yeah, and, people, and there's two really valuable things you said there. So one side of it is that we've lost these, what you call initiation centers. And that's really what a men's club, female club, that's, it's it's linking back to the old days of when the child would be would leave the village at the age of 14 and spend it with the elder women or the elder men to learn what they needed to know in order to reintegrate with the tribe and the way things work. So it was this place of learning is what it really is. It became, of course, something else in our history but that's what it was it was a place of yeah. learning and knowledge and whatnot and then the other part of it is the breakdown of the family unit is is so great because it also it, it one of the first breakdowns that they happened was to get rid of the old people because in the in the older cult in the ancient cultures it's those older people who have lived through stuff they've gone through a child rearing phase they learned what they what the mistakes were and how they should have been and now uh, a lot of the teaching used to happen by the elders, right? The, the grandfathers and the grandmothers had a very important role and they became teachers because they learned what the, all the mistakes I made when I was a parent. And now I get to correct those mistakes and the, and the child becomes much more bound. And we've lost all that completely. So right. not only do we have a problem with the, with the family, with the male feet, with the mother, father, female, your mother, father, male, female unit it's broken. It's shattered. It's, but we have, we have no elders built into the society as teaching roles. We've lost that completely. And I think that's one of the first breakdowns in all of us, how we've how we've grown up. We our role models have been so poor. And mm. that's what we've lost that that part of the of the unit. Yeah, yeah. And it's been flipped. It's now, you know, the emphasis is on the young people. Um, you know, like a lot of, you know, companies now, you know, especially with all the tech yeah. stuff going on, they won't hire anyone if they're over 30 because they, they've got no value anymore, right? So um, it's, yeah, it's completely turned the value system around so that now what we listen to people who have no wisdom and we've we've lost our, our wise people. So, right. yeah, um, you know, and this, yeah, this that's a big one as well because, you know, grandparents, if you've got kids as well, everyone has kids and they stress out and they can't, you know, get time alone or babysitters and that, and they've got these grandparents that they're paying money to, to buddy keep in a old people's home. I mean, hello, you know, they, they just need to make a change and they've, you know, yeah. solved all these problems. Um, so that's something that, I mean, I, I think that's yeah. the biggest thing is we just need to find our community again, right? Build community where we run it, yeah. and where, where, you know, so we're more internally focused on what we want to build and, less sort of um, opinion and information yeah, good, from the outside. Because there's also no question, if somebody hits like 65, 70, and they still feel valued, you know, somebody's like 65, their grandma now, and, and but they feel like there's a value, there's an importance, there's something that they're doing. My family is is appreciating what I did, that they, they stay healthier. They do. Well, naturally, they the, they have this purpose. And so they are, they, they are, they naturally stay healthy. Um, as opposed to when, as soon as you're pushed away, you're not needed. You're 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 of no value now. You just start plummeting. Yeah. So it also keeps the health level up of everyone by having this inclusive nature. And yeah, we we've like you say, being out in nature, valuable. Uh, re rebuilding community, valuable. Rebuilding community with people of different ages valuable you know it's no good just to have a community like you say if everybody is 25 years old well that's going to run into problems you need some different age groups of different knowledge and, and ideas to share and um well maybe that's what you're going to start doing when you go out east you'll be you'll begin your own community building yeah 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 well that's kind of the plan we want to get out there and, and start doing something different and build some stuff and um you know that's the thing right we want something different so 
action does that, I guess. We've got to take action and get out there and do Stop talking and start doing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there we go. We're hitting, oh, we're just on about the hour mark. So that's Actually, I have an idea. I know you're closing, Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I know you're ready to close, but I have an idea right. for a video in the in the in January. I'll tell tell you when we're off camera. All right. But um because you know we're looking ahead to 2023, but I'll I'll, I'll give you this idea as when we've done this. All right, cool. Everyone else will have to wait until 2023. There you go. Um so yeah, all right, there we go. Um, we'll wrap that one up for the end of 2022. Gosh, we're a week out almost, 10 days out from Christmas or something. Um, so two weeks, oh my gosh, two, about two weeks away from 2023. So um, yeah, thanks for being with us all year, everyone. Hope you um, had a good year. Hope you have a, a happy Christmas and festivities and all that kind of stuff. Don't buy lots of presents, just bring your presents. Um, and we'll talk to you all next year. All right, signing off and um, yeah, thanks Hattie. We'll talk again next year. Cheers.